In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do customizations to your OneSocial theme. So before we do anything technical, I should show you that in the custom code section, if you just have a small snippet of CSS or JavaScript you want to add, you can go to custom codes and just paste it in here, and it will, JavaScript as well, and it will output on the front end. But if you want to do something a little more complex than that, then you would want to go into an actual text editor. So here, I'm in my local host, um, which means this is running the website from my computer. Probably you would have it running on a, a server. So through FTP, you would connect to the server and then uh, edit files. I covered in the first video in the series that you're going to want to be running a one social child theme. So if I go to appearance themes, you can see we've got the child theme running. That's very important that we're going to make our edits in the child theme so that when we push updates to the parent theme with bug fixes or feature requests, our edits we're about to do don't get um, deleted right away. They would be saved because they'll be in the child theme. So here we have the one social child theme and right out of the box it's like this. It's basically a skeleton child theme. It's got all the components you would need to do customizations but it, it doesn't really do anything until you start adding things. So we have a functions file and you can see that it's loading uh, CSS C slash custom CSS. So if we open that up, here's our CSS file and here we can add styles. So let's head back over to our, our website and here in Chrome, which is what I recommend using, you can open up the Chrome inspector by just right clicking on the screen and clicking inspect. And then from here we can pick out any element on the page and see what's going on. So here I've got the title selected and we can see, let me just hide the console. We can see over here the styles that are being added to the title. So right here in the browser, we can play with things. So I'll make the color red. And then we're gonna copy this into our CSS file so I can show you how to do that. So if we come back here, you can see if you look carefully at the media queries, we've got um, one is a maximum width of 480 pixels, which would be basically targeting a phone in portrait mode and smaller. For the most part, you don't, you can't ever know exactly which, which one's going to be for phone just through CSS because different phones have different sizes, different resolutions, etc. But this is approximately a, a, a portrait phone and smaller. 481 up is going to be anything bigger than that. And then 721 up is going to be targeting even a bit bigger for tablets and stuff. And then we also have global styles, which will be everything. So let's go ahead and in the global styles, we'll add entry title, color, red. Remember that's what we tested here. So this was just in the browser, it's not saved. Now we have it saved here. So let's see what happens. Sure enough, that works. And again, that's global, so that's gonna be everywhere. Let's try something else. Let's remove that out of global and put it in the media query for maximum width of 480. So if we refresh this, you'll see it's gone. And then if I make the browser thin, once we hit 480 wide, it goes red, right? So that's how you edit styles. And this is just a template again. I mean, you, you can change this, uh, these numbers, you can add more media queries, you can do whatever you want here. This is your style sheet. And then in functions, you can add any functions you want in here and they will load. And then you can also add templates in here. So let me explain a little bit more. Um, the way this works, and it's not just with our themes, this is a, a WordPress standard convention, is that any styles you add into the child theme will be loaded in addition to the style sheets from the parent theme. And any functions you add are going to be run in addition to any functions in the parent theme. However, templates replace the templates in the parent theme. So let me pause this for a moment and open up the parent theme. Okay, so here we have the parent theme. So let's say you wanted to edit the file footer.php. What you would do is copy footer.php, same file name, and place it into your child theme and edit it in the child theme. And if that file is replicated in the child theme, then the version that's in the child theme will be run instead of the one in the parent theme, okay? So this is why it's nice to do it in the child theme. At any point, you can go reference the parent theme and see what you've edited. And again, as you make updates, 
that footer.php will update in the parent theme and you could compare against and if any updates were important you can grab them um, and so it's a very safe way of editing things.